All right, so uh, nobody's joined me yet, but hopefully uh, we get some people in soon. So uh, I'm Jay, and we are going to uh, play the Outer Worlds. So if you looked at my comments, uh, my uh, intro, um, this is uh, actually not my first time playing through, so um, I'm familiar with the game, uh, but I am going to play through everything and, and uh, not skip cutscenes and things like that. So, uh, you know, if people want to uh, to watch, they can. Um, in this playthrough, I'm going to be doing kind of a, a theme character, uh, kind of calling him the Corporate Avenger. Basically, I'm going to do all the uh, all the actions that the uh, that the board and the uh, corporations want me to do. So I'm going to uh, try and kind of play the bad guy, so to speak, in this one. But uh, So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and create myself here as a character, and we'll get started. Real quick, I want to double-check something. Because it's the uh, view that I'm in. All right, here we go. I'm gonna play on normal. So here we go. Why stay earthbound when prosperity awaits you in the stars? Come to Halcyon, the only colony on the edge of the frontier owned and operated by corporations. A trip of 10 short years will feel like mere minutes thanks to the comfort and safety of your very own hibernation chamber. You'll wake up in a perfect society designed to maximize your productivity with guaranteed full employment. With only a minor term of service, you will become the master of your own destiny when you go out of this world to the Halcyon Colony. Phineas Wells. <sighs> Hundreds of thousands of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. So I'm going to take a uh, build here that uh, is going to give me a decent amount of uh, ability to uh, fire guns, as well as uh, some of the, uh, the conversation uh, trees, open things up there, uh, charm and temperament, so it'll help with my uh, 
This will help with my uh, my uh, followers as well. So. A gunslinger. Oh, they're going to tell stories about you from here to Hephaestus. And we'll do leadership and uh, ranged weapons as my specialties. Give me a good start there. Handguns over 20 to start, so I get the bonus even just to get going. And since most of this is pretty just flavor, uh, not much difference here. I'm gonna take the uh, I'm gonna take the dirt farmer uh, aptitude so that I get that little bit of a uh, little bit of, uh, of help on N-ray damage. So. Ah, a real salt of the earth type. So, we'll get my character uh, set up here. Pardon me. Some of these dirt patterns are just a little too convenient. Alright, so I got a decent start on some of these here. Kind of a uh, 
middling build to kind of get going. Looks to be your lucky day, my friend. Bootlickers. Ugh. Initiate skip jump. There you are, wondering what's going on, eh? Bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space and forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. This means that you and every other colonist on the Hope have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? Unfortunately, I used the last of my chemical supplies saving you. I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! Cracks me up, his stuff's always breaking down. Can you hear me? Is this thing working? Ah, there you are. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the smuggler. His name is Hawthorne, and he should be waiting for you at the landing site. He's to be your uh, chauffeur, so to speak. And not to worry, I'm told he's a specialist. Dashing, gunslinger, one-of-a-kind ship, that sort of thing. You'll like him, I'm sure. I've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor, so I can track your progress. I'll check in with you as soon as you land. Good luck. I'm... Uh, all the colonists are counting on you.
As tutorials go, this isn't really bad. I, you know, kind of gets you, get you going. Although I'd love to be able to kill the sprat there for hides. He didn't have anything this time. Canids up there. Try the best now. <laughs> now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Oh. <sighs> Looks like the bleeding stopped. I owe you one. Hope you don't mind me omitting this little exchange for my report. Spacer's choice doesn't like us accepting outside help. Better, thanks to you. I might have bled out on my own. Or worse, had to go begging the boss for some Madrina time. We were out on patrol. I saw a marauder camp up in the hills. Thought I could take him. Then my gun misfired, right through my side. I mean, what are the odds of that, right? Just barely scraped by with my life. Crawled in here and blocked off the exit with those canisters. Gibbering, flesh-eating, law-breaking, unemployed lunatics with guns. Some hull had grounded their spacecraft out in the open. That's a real good way to attract marauders. See those canisters by the entrance? Marauders come sniffing around in here, and I can take them all out with a single shot. Not bad, huh? Yeah, okay. You look like you know your way around a gun. Got some spare ammo. Not counting the bullet in my side. Here, you can have my saber too, for patching me up and all. All Spacer's Choice weapons are now 30% less likely to malfunction. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's Choice. Yes, nailed it that time. You hit your head or something? You're in Emerald Vale. We're a Spacer's Choice community. Edgewater's a little ways down. Uh, prettiest place in the Vale. Uh, be sure to stop by a provisioner's for a can of our famous salt tuna. The Hope? Is that some sort of fancy new drug? Are you with anti-Cleo or something? Don't take this the wrong way or nothing, but I'm not allowed to fraternize with Cleo workers. Company policy. All right, so there's some stuff here I'll grab. Tactical time dilation. Stuff from these guys.
And that's going to take enough picks that I'm not going to worry about it. that go a little bit too long. before you get yourself killed. Don't know where you came from, stranger, but you best keep your head down. There's marauders hereabouts, and worse, landing violators. Call on that rung leech. Landing in the veil without using an official Spacer's Choice landing pad. I'd slap him with a fine if it weren't for all these marauders shambling about. You pulling my limb? I, I mean, yeah, of course. Marauders. Bunch of addle brain derelicts. I could round them up all by myself. I just, you know, need a couple of winks to catch my breath. Stretch my legs some. Go ahead and equip a sword. That didn't go as well as I hoped. Shots coming from somewhere.
Marauder, please be informed that ignoring me is dangerous for your health. Unauthorized access of spacefaring vessels is a crime. Please submit yourself to the authorities. Hello, Marauder. I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure to do so will result in your immediate destruction. I have been programmed to communicate with diplomacy and tact. Please allow me to demonstrate. Jettison procedures initiated. Disengage in airlocks. Prepare to eject all foreign parties in five, four, three, two, one. You are still here. My deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express disappointment. <laughs> This vessel is the registered property of Captain Alex Hawthorne. I am incapable of accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. I deduce from the tone of your voice that Captain Hawthorne failed to meet you at the designated location. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience and for your honesty. I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. If I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you understand? Well done, Captain Hawthorne. I see your powers of deductive reasoning remain intact. Unfortunately, our engine is currently inoperable. Our main drive suffered a critical power failure, and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged and must be replaced. Astutely observed. However, the probability of locating a power regulator within a worker settlement falls within acceptable parameters of certainty. High capacity power regulators are sometimes employed in the electrical networks of worker settlements. I have taken the liberty of printing you a new captain's identity cartridge. Please try not to lose it this time. This cartridge identifies you, Alex Hawthorne, as the registered proprietor and captain of the unreliable. Do you understand? Thank you. I appreciate your cooperation. Best of luck in your search for a power regulator. Try to stay alive this time. The navigation console is offline at this time, Captain. All right, let's go ahead and get my level up here, skill and perk points. Five left here. Let's see where can I get. Looks like my sneak. I can get up to. Let's put the rest in leadership. So I upped some skills up enough that I got a few extra bonuses there. I think I'll take the armor bonus to start. If your equipment is in need of repair or modification, 
The Crux 2000 workbench is at your disposal, Captain. Alright. So I got some stuff I can break down. Oh, didn't get any armor from the... Do I have any modifications yet? I don't think so. I didn't think I had any mods. Don't have enough science to tinker, so I will get some science as I go along here. Repair the shotgun. All right. Let's go ahead and equip the shotgun. Say, this wouldn't happen to be your ship, would it? Because you sure walked in it like it was your ship. And if this ship is yours, well, mister, you owe Spacer's Choice a hefty fine. I'm afraid we gotta dock your pay. Oh, by the law. I'm so sorry. I had no idea we had an inspector coming. If you'd like to speak with my manager, I report to Constable Reyes in Edgewater. Edgewater's not too far. Just follow the road east of here, over past the cemetery. Now, if you'll excuse me. I need to inspect the crime scene before I make my report. All right. So we're heading off to Edgewater. I think that's where we'll end for the first episode here. Hopefully uh, we can get some people to, to watch. I'll be inviting some of my my friends and maybe we'll get this uh, get through this as a an ongoing series Go some ammo. Apparently, he didn't have anything.
And here we are at Edgewater. Oh, hey. Where'd you come from? Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town. Avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls. And low, low prices. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Name's Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. Hey, I earned that fancy title. Started off a lowly junior gravesite builder, then junior interment engineer. Oh, and I was a junior burial assistant for a time. The rate I've been working, I'm bound to earn a promotion. Must be about 50, 60 burials away from associate in humor. Definitely not the junior in humor, that's for sure. If you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town, follow the road. Look, you obviously ain't a worker. What's your racket? You a smuggler? Freelancer? Edgewater is a company town, board owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our gravesites, we rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues, you see? Quotas, mostly. Got a backlog of graves to fill. Bodies won't bury themselves, you know? Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. Conrad's got a barbershop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. He just is. Look, I don't want to get into it. Just make sure he pays up. I don't think I'd been in Silas's office yet. Kind of interesting.
start asking you for some medicine, come tell me. I'll set him straight. Keep your distance, friend. Sick house is no place for a traveler. I appreciate the company and all, but you really ought to leave. You don't want to be seen around me. Because I'm sick. You don't want to associate with people in the sick house. We're not worth your time. I'm in about as much trouble as I can be. No reason you ought to be tarnished by association. People are gonna talk. I don't know which company you work for, but if it's Spacer's choice, Boss can still write you up for fraternizing with an incompetent worker. Maybe you don't know this, but there's a real simple reason you don't talk to the plagued. You don't want what we've got. Don't. Please. I could get into a lot of trouble. People trouble. Lazy worker like me getting special treatment from some out-of-town physiker like you? People will talk. Company always tells us. Weak spirits lead to weak bodies. If I didn't want to fall sick with plague, maybe I should have worked harder. Maybe I should have taken more pride in my work. I really wish you wouldn't say those sorts of things. I told you once already. People could be listening. I'm feeling a touch faint. If you don't mind, I'd like to be alone for a spell. So, because I'm doing a corporate run here, I'm obviously not going to steal from the corporations and lower my ratings with them. But there are a few things in here that I can grab, as well as the ability to take care of a couple of sprats, get some hides. That takes care of everything in here. And then the uh, Please don't touch anything. Your hands are probably crawling with germs. Physical hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. No, thank you. That's quite all right. I've seen enough body parts in my line of work. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet Spacer's Choice aesthetic standards. You will also report to me in the event of your death, whereupon I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. As broke as pie crust, friend. Bitless, indigent, destitute. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. Thank you, no. I despise the cereals. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay. 
and that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. Much obliged. So again, I can't take anything in here, but I do find a little clipboard here with some information. Now Conrad can use that as his IOU. What can I do for you? Oh? Am I in the company of a fellow doctor? I am a Spacer's Choice Certified Surgeon. And if you must know, I can stitch a severed thumb with a 58% chance of avoiding gangrene. You know about Eugene? How? You probably heard it from one of our local gossip mongers. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom, representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He <laughs> took them to his grave. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? Yes, I suppose I must. Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. So, kind of gruesome, but it's one way to get it done. Alright, over here we got some wanted posters. Doc Maybell from the Spacer's Choice Department of Retirement, a writ of execution, effective immediately for Maybell Burgess, former Spacer's Choice physician, condemned on charges of dereliction of duty, disappeared from Edgewater with two parcels of Adrena time, at large and dangerous. Um, all the other, uh, all the other uh, wanted posters are similar. Let's go this talk to Constance Reyes. Constable Reyes. Welcome to the Spacer's Choice Constabulary. We are Halcyon's leading brand in frontier justice. The office is writing up promotion. Purchase three criminal investigations and the fourth one's free. As a Spacer's Choice Constable, I am authorized to grant you legal authority toward apprehending wanted criminals. Know how to carry yourself in a fight? I've got bounties out for these three marauders. Cross them off and bring me their fingers. Just one per marauder, please. I'll dust off the old fingerprint roller. As long as your questions fall within the acceptable margins of curiosity. If this is a setup to a joke, you should know I've never found anything amusing in my life. <laughs> I don't serve Edgewater. Edgewater and the entire region of Emerald Vale serves Spacer's Choice. Spacer's Choice is a wholly owned subsidiary of Universal Defense Logistics, which occupies a seat on the Halcyon Holdings Corporation, also known as the Board. I must admit it bothers me that you don't already know this. His likeness decorates many a wanted poster. 
Do you have any relevant information about this individual? You are correct. An outstanding bounty has been posted for information pertaining to the whereabouts of Phineas B. Wells. Unfortunately, the arrest of Mr. Wells falls outside my authority. I enforce the company policy as Facer's choice in the region of Emerald Vale. Wells is wanted by the board. If you have information related to the location of Phineas B. Wells, you are required to submit that information to your nearest board authority. Any information regarding outstanding bounties and wanted criminals should be directed to Mr. Udom Bedford. Mr. Bedford's office is located on the Groundbreaker. Halcyon's original colony ship, now repurposed into a space station. Mr. Udom Bedford represents the board's interest on the Groundbreaker. Something else I can do for you? Alright, so I need to talk to Udom Bedford to get more information on turning Phineas Wells in. So I can see the bounties here again. Almost lost a finger in the cannery today. Just the way it goes, I suppose. Yes, Mr. Thompson. I'm fine, Mr. Thompson. Never been healthier. Well, uh, did, uh, did Mr. Thompson send you? Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post. Tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow. Because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. And what are you doing here? Visiting? Well, let me give you the grand tour. This here's my domicile, and there's the door. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. I'm dying. I'm not long for this world. The date of my expiration is fast approaching, and soon I shall be ushered through the great cannery in the skies. It's plague. Has to be. Silas knows. He knows I got one foot in my grave, and now he wants to charge me for the other one. You are? <laughs> wow. First time anyone's ever told me that. I'll pay your fees. I don't want any trouble from Silas. But if you could see a way to freelancing for me, I could really use the help. Couple hours out of your day and some light second story work. That's all. There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Stronger than what we got, anyway. I need you to break in, nab that medicine, and bring it back to me. I'll do what I can. You will not find any guards within sight of that old place. Marauders, on the other hand. I have it on good authority. There's a gang of them squatting there. I advise stepping softly. I tried medicating myself with Adrena time. Didn't do much for me, as far as I can tell. Anyway, I can't just buy medicine. Distribution of medicine is strictly prohibited to any workers beneath the acceptable margin of health. Company policy. More like the company won't treat me because I'm not healthy enough. So you'll do it then?
You're making a mistake working for Abernathy. Excuse me. I'm Esther Blaine, Spacer's Choice Actuary. I overheard your talk with Abernathy. I hope you're not thinking about getting him that medicine. Abernathy is a well-known hypochondriac. Anthracillin is wasted on him. You're better off selling it to me instead. All I'm saying is Abernathy's worked in this town longer than some of us been alive. How do I put this gently? He's, uh... He's got a lot of cobwebs up in his attic. I probably shouldn't tell you. Don't want you implicated for what I'm trying to do. All right. Here's a summary. A lot of sick people in this town, and we don't have the medicine to treat them all. Can't reach out to corporate without crossing a river of red tape, so I'm reaching out to you. I'm paid better than Abernathy. Whatever he's giving you, I will do you one better. That's all I can ask of you. All right, we'll go talk to Reed Thompson, and then we'll call it from there. The grease monkey, Argo. I'm sorry. Mr. Thompson, sir, you asked why it's taking so long to fix. The answer's technical. Don't apologize. Just try using small words for me. The cans bust open in the oven because she's set to cook saltuna, which isn't what we've got. Mr. Thompson, I think there's someone here to see you. Focus, Miss Holcomb. You and I are still talking. Let's start <laughs> over. Walk me through the process. Show me where it's going awry. Well, sure. It's, uh, mostly on account of what we're feeding into the mechanism. It puts food in cans. We have food, we have cans. Why won't it work like we need? She's expecting Saltuna of a certain size. We're filling the cans with... Well, not fish. Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. You were saying, Miss Holcomb. It's just what Bess needs is a proper refurbish. I, I, I can bandage her up and what all, but she's just old. Sorry, I I'm sorry. I'll, I'll do better. And I do wish you'd stop referring to our cannery as Bess. Personification of company property is strictly contrary to the Spacer's Choice Code of Conduct. My apologies. I am not in the habit of allowing my guests to witness such a row. Now, what can I do for you? I'm Reed Thompson, outpost administrator. I cannot help but notice you are not in uniform. Shirt, pants, work boots, company approved colors, the, uh, honorable apparel of a loyal worker? Yes, so it dawns on me. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. Only regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Thompson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator. But I happen to know of another one. And I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. Oh, yeah. Saw someone put his hands on a regulator while the power was running. His legs were still twitching when we buried him. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. No, I do not imagine they will be pleased. But like a parent disciplining an unruly child, you will be doing them a kindness. The people living in the botanical labs, they're deserters, former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. 
My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go, and that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. Adelaide's older than the other deserters. She's dignified, kindly. From what I understand, her camp looks to her for leadership. That is not a hypothetical I enjoy entertaining. We need Adelaide back. Nonetheless, I will settle for the return of her followers. We belong to one community, the Spacer's Choice family. If we dissolve into factions, then we will all perish separately. Adelaide will understand that. My dad told me all about the plant. Taught me all he knew. I could come in useful. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. Sir. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb, but I cannot deny that she is talented and may prove useful to you. You will need an administrative passcode in order to enter the plant. I am trusting you with mine and trusting Miss Holcomb to guide you if you'd like. Great! I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. All right. So I've got Parvati as a companion now. And that's where we're going to call it for tonight. So like I said, this is going to be a semi-regular thing. Probably once or twice a week. I'm going to try to uh, continue my Corporate Avenger storyline. So we'll talk about that more as we get to some choices that have to be made. But I'm sure you can see where the first one's going. So we will uh, do this again soon.